Hey everyone, Carmen here, digital editor at Ms. And I am with Jess Zeno and June Diane Rayfield, the co-founders of the Jane Club. And yes. thank you both so much. And we are actually live from the Jane Club right now, this beautiful space that you all have opened together. Um, and so, I mean, the first thing that I sort of want to dive into is, you know, we're here in the mother of all workspaces in a matriarchal oasis, I believe it's been described as. <laughs> and, um, and so my two sort of first questions, and I feel like they're gonna end up connecting, which is why I'm asking them together, is how did this matriarchal oasis get born? And then also, why was that so important to both of you, that centering mm -hmm. of working women and working moms? Yeah. Um, I mean, I should start off probably by even pushing back on the, the phrase working moms, because we truly believe that all mothers work. Right? Mm. And we honor all work yeah. um, and all forms of caretaking, some that are paid and some that are not paid, but it is all work to us. Um, but to step back even further, Jess came to me with this idea, and Jess and I had met at this political, this women's political progressive group that popped up right after the election. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to speak of which one. <laughs> the um, one, the one, yeah. <laughs> and it was a group of women who we knew from just the community of mothers that had already kind of latched on to each other for support and encouragement and um, had naturally come together. We, one of them, uh, writer Jesse Klein, who wrote for Amy Schumer Show, is a well known author. She brought us all together on the Sunday after that election, and we all went to the neighboring JCC and just sat in a circle and cried, and like, yes. <laughs> held oh, each other and lit a candle, <laughs> and really just tried to process what had just happened and where to go. Um, and that was the first time I really we, we'd sort of seen each other from different, you know, people we knew, but it was the first time Jess and I had really connected, and I was so impressed with her. Um, spirit and like gutsiness to start things and to try things and the courage that that takes to find someone who's willing to do that uh, and Jess really came to me with this idea and I I mean Jess you can take it from there where what happened why you needed it yes <laughs> so I have been working my whole life and I had a baby at 38 and I wasn't planning for it it happened and I thought to myself, because I had been working so long, like, oh, I'll just have the baby and I'll be working as I'm breastfeeding <laughs> at the hospital. So when that didn't happen, <laughs> and motherhood changed me in a way that I was lonely by and brought up a lot that really required the community of other women to teach me how to be a mother and to be a person, really, after I gave birth. Um, it was in those communities that I thought, oh, this is something powerful here that gets us all through. Um, it does take a village. And my parents are on the East Coast, and I didn't have that. And, you know, caretakers are, you never know. And I didn't know that experience. But I had been working, and I thought, well, why isn't there also the place where I can work? So in these political action groups, I see June. And June is a woman of tremendous integrity. and. Whatever spirit she saw in me, I definitely saw in her. And the way she would stand and like walk her talk, I thought to myself, like, that's a woman who, if we were on Survivor together, I think that we can, <laughs> believe it or not, get through it pretty easily because we see what we want and we go there. <laughs> so we went to lunch and I said, hey, I know that you have these two young children. I know you're super busy. How is there not this like beautiful place that we could have that is built for women who are not necessarily like on the rise up or trying to find themselves, but just a place to be and to commune and to have that community as women um, and to rather be a patriarchal setup, be a matriarchal one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was in the exact point in my life where I just had my second child. I was in the middle of writing a book and was, had no space to um, both mother and pursue my creative dreams. They're, they were very two very separate ideas, and I think for most women they are. Yeah. You know, and... I think most women I know and Jess knows and people who come in here, 
the men in the position where they're either apologizing for being mothers when they're at work mm -hmm. and not talking about it, hiding it, it's not an issue, don't worry about it, I'm not going to take any time off, I'm not, you won't, you won't see this, <laughs> or um, they are when they're, you know, with their kids and mothers also apologizing for having work that's paid outside the home and pretending that right. that's not happening yep. and pretending I'm home, like, home, I'm taking care of yeah, it. Yeah, and pretending that there aren't other things. So I was really struck with how that setup was just so um, not supportive and how we're really not doing right by women who should be making the most money they'll ever make and are having babies later and later. And that's a trend that's only gonna continue and we are not doing right by them. And we're not offering infrastructure support. So that's really where the Gene Club uh, was born, was the idea of creating actual walls and not just talking about like, see, if I see another woman on a panel talking about how she makes it work, like I am going to run out into traffic. <laughs> because it's, it's really just dialogue, it's really just, you know, about the individual. And that's where, you know, that's what we're interested in. It's not in like how one individual person makes it work, but rather how we can create new systems. Awesome. Well, and yeah, I was sort of wondering to, you know, the, um, the members of the Jane Club, I'm wondering if you could walk me through, you guys offer so many resources and so many sort of, you know, there's so much value baked in here. So what's an average day for a Jane Club member like when they're in these classes? Her day is different than my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's different from, day, from <laughs> Jane to Jane. The Janes all have their unique experience. Yes. <laughs> but if we were to take someone's experience, um, we have an incredible village that we've built out, as you said, of like amenities that are here. So for June, she'll come in and have her coffee and take a Pilates class as part of our, so I love how I'm giving you your day. I know, like, oh, <laughs> what do I do next? She does her Pilates class with our Sweat With Jane program, and then um, sits down in the community room and does her little computer hour, she writes like this. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> I also type like that. Like yeah. And everyone you hears it. Yeah. yeah. You like hear it. Like, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's giving me this power before, type. Power. I like that it's on Facebook Live <laughs> that I've outed in your yeah, first time. Yeah, it was so upsetting. It's not upsetting. It's not It's not upsetting. It's delightful. <laughs> um, I'll come in and say hello to everybody. Just because, and and I often get like, can you just keep it down just a little? <laughs> um, but I'll say hello to everyone because I just love everyone in the space, and I'll too get coffee, and then we just get to work. Yeah, and then we we'll work. This is our workspace, and it really, it, it's really sort of built to to for for women to get out of it what they need. So there yeah. are women who come to meditation at eleven thirty, who do yoga in the morning, who come to our community like gathering. Uh, programming events like we do an ask and give where our our genes ask for something from the group and offer something to the group. So we have some networking events built in and then we have these fireside chats where you can come and listen to for a half an hour during your work day someone talk about eating bugs. Yeah. We have this amazing woman <laughs> here protein. who's buggable about yeah. bug protein and she so brought those are the type of yeah, so in our fridge you know, pop in and get it uh, some enriching experience. We do a lot of work and a whole series around um, racial and identity. And so women were given the opportunity to take these classes and really explore in a safe environment that was led by a well-trained facilitator how how their identity is informed and asking them to look at it. So they're all Spanish classes. There are all these different types of uh, offerings. Enrichment. Enrichment that, that you know, we have a lot of Janes come and do all of it. Mm -hmm. And then we have, and pitch us their own ideas. Mm -hmm. One of our Janes is doing a clothing swap. Right? Yeah. Because she just wanted to do it. And the book just came in from Emma. We have an author here who wrote See for Consent, and she has a book idea oh, for yeah. a book. So it's fun to have a group of amazing women offer their own. Absolutely. But we also have some Janes who come in here with bookable rooms, and they come in, they, you know, do their own thing, and they get their work done. So it's really... One thing we're really clear on is that um, we don't put a judgment value on how our genes want to use the space or what they need from the space. So if 
Some of our jeans need a manicure before they can do one goddamn thing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get her. Yeah. You know, we do car washes on Fridays, normal car washes. And some of these amenities, people look at it and they're like, oh, really? That's what women need? Well, actually, yes. when we talk about the, full, <laughs> the fullness of women's lives, someone's doing all these things, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a part of, of one of our core values, which is honoring all work. And honoring the fact that it, it's majority women who are picking up and doing the life admin that is happening in families. So until we really address that and talk about that granular work in details and offer ways in which it can be supported here, we're not really talking about women and work. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just like we're it's it's all very vague and mysterious. So at the Jane Club, we're we're starting to get very real and specific about it. And however much or little they use it, we are the women who takes care of the woman who does takes care of everything else. Mm -hmm. So yes. that means all, everything, all That's work. That's exactly right. Yes, and I mean, based on your excitement about the car washes, <laughs> also, I mean, this was just Car wash is epic. <laughs> it's, it's important. It is important, especially in LA, where it's, everyone is seeing your, your car. Your home. <laughs> yes. And, and every reflection of you. Yes. yes. They're sure. disgusting out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are. They're really, really gross. Well, and how much of your own experiences as women trying to do this balancing act, this juggling act, more like, how much of that is sort of baked into what you offer? Like, how much of the things that you wanted or needed are sort of uh, everything? Every we do laundry here for women, which specifically was a need for me never to do laundry again. <laughs> we chose the location based on how far we would drive. From our actual own home. Yeah, it's everything, all, Carmen. Everything. <laughs> yes. There's new stuff coming in that is not based on us, but yes. some of the core, you know, some of the core things we came up with in the beginning were a thousand percent just like I I need this. And we did need this piece. Um, I need the child care. I need the manicures, mm -hmm. I need the blowouts, I need the car washes, I need the, the gift community. Shop. I need the community too to not feel like a lonely Slob. Yep. I mean, truly. The like, Wi-Fi. You need the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I need to be able to work out and like just shower here mm -hmm. and start my day as opposed to going to the gym and parking mm -hmm. and then leave, like showering there and then leaving like and yes. going home and is that in forty five minutes? Yeah, it is, and I don't have the time for that. Like I, I don't. Yeah. So. All of these things have been created to really, as Jess said, take care of the woman who's taking care of everything else. And then, you know, sort of when you built this based on your own experiences and your own vision, who are the Janes? Like, who are these mm -hmm. modern women coming in? Like, if there was a sort of, I don't know, a prototype yes. yes. yeah. of Jane. We're obsessed with Jane. <laughs> so I would say that our, we, have, we actually have, it's really hard to nail down because 25% of our members, our Janes, are not um, mothers, and so they're not using the childcare, uh, which is fascinating because we don't, we really don't push, you know, the kind of the mommy branding, which we could talk about because it makes me absolutely bananas <laughs> um, in the, in the space. So we're offering sort of an, an a, we're speaking to women as mothers, as adults, right? We're not speaking yes. to them as like mama this, mama that, like you, as though they are their children, mm -hmm. you know? So of course we have a lot of dudes who come to us who are like, wait, who've been here for two weeks and do not realize there's childcare because <laughs> they have never heard them. They've never seen them. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so like there's that's some kids out there in the yard. <laughs> 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 It's like, oh, that's my child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind that. Yeah, so we do offer real separation of church and state. And, and then I would say also we have a really good number of our genes who are doing that separation from their small child mm -hmm. for the first time. So for the space for them becomes this really soft landing and this, you know, transition into motherhood that is, is not like, oh, I just left my baby, my three-month-old for eight hours a day, like, what am I doing? I've had girlfriends who've had full-on panic attacks. You know, it's such a, it's so much to ask of a new mom. Um, and then we have moms who come to use a child care who their kid goes back every night to five and they're like, I, I will never step back there. And that's <laughs> awesome do. too. Yeah, like we don't, um, so it's really a wide range, but I would say most of our, 
Because we're in LA, we have a lot of people like, in the entertainment. Mm -hmm. We create. It's a creative space. It's a creative space, mostly with entrepreneurs. Um, we have. Who else? Do we, we have. have so I think about there's not really one ideal. We have creatives in the entertainment. So, like she said, we have actresses, producers, writers. Yeah. We have nonprofit change makers. We have designers. We have a doctor or two. We have mostly educational doctors, not the doctor student. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that a magician? That there's not, not, there's not a surgery. <laughs> I, I will say we did an amazing partnership with we did when they offered bonus checks in this office to our jeans during oh, the day. Awesome. And so we had some of our jeans say, you know, they did breast exams and all sorts of things. And we had a jean say, I have not had a checkup in six years. And this was her first time that day with Heal. So that was incredible to see too, yeah. like, oh, we are really taking care and offering things that we think we don't have time for. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing to have just something as simple as that be taken care of and that woman doesn't need to feel guilty, shamed, harried, piecemeal, yeah. it's all here. So the Jane is most likely, um, can I give an age demo on this? I would say, I, I you know, I would say a certain age. Yeah, obviously <laughs> 22. That's pretty clear by looking at us. I don't know why we have to talk about that. Um, I think we have, we, our, most of our genes are in their mid 30s, so mid 30s, and most of them have uh, our freelancers, majority, and I would say all of them uh, are. Are, in, are showing up right. authentically in this yes. space. And that's what's been really cool to see. It's a beautiful, chic space, and yet people can kind of come as they are. Yes. I love to say we're not a place where you put your makeup on, you take your makeup off. Despite the fact that I'm rocking a bold red leg <laughs> and she's wearing a gorgeous pink. You're not required to. You're not required to <laughs> wear makeup. <laughs> right. But we're seeing that, that you know, when you, you know, create a space with, with really authentic intentions. You know, in some ways, I feel like Jess and I just built it and what, what's gone on here in the magic community with like nothing to do with it. Yes. It's all just yep. these incredible women of choice. Yes, yes. It's been um, a real honor almost, yes. a humble honor for she and I to just sort of act as like, I don't even know what, just a tuning fork in the middle and just what has happened yeah. here has been its own sort it's of magical thing. It's yeah, pretty incredible. Oh, that sounds amazing. And what what do you think the sort of reverberating impact will be? You know, I know the goal was to open the space and to create this space, but now that it's yeah. here, we've always had big visions. Yeah. 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 But I think you know, honestly, there's there's also a a relearning that has to go on. I think culturally, when we talk about, you know, I've even heard some women say, and I'm sure I've said it myself, like, well, I mean, oh, and you get like 12 weeks maternity, like that's awesome. Yeah. Like, no, it's not. No, it's you know not. what I mean? Like, no, it's not. And and um, it, it's actually. I mean, if we're talking just on a global scale, it, it's horrible. It's the worst in all of the yeah. world. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. And so we should have been primed to be happy with very little when it comes to motherhood. We have been. Uh, so there's sort of a relearning that has to go on in our culture, and we have to, you know. I mean, even when we talk about caretaking. I mean, I believe our entire society would change if we took, if we value caretakers, both domestic workers and, you know, mothers and, you know, caretaking the elderly. Like, that would change our world if we really valued the work of caretaking. So that's the sort of larger cultural conversation as we open up more and more gene clubs that we're looking to have, which is to say, you must offer child care in every space. You must acknowledge that women are mothers and men are fathers. And one thing we met with Amy Nelson at the Riveter was incredible, and she was saying how frustrated she gets when she hears the term like family noun. You know, in the corporate world, like when someone's described as like he's a real family man. And she's like, I'm gonna start using the term like family woman. Like I'm a real, you know, I'm a family woman. It's like oh. and these kinds of sort of assumptions and these kinds of um you know, deeply baked in like misogynistic patriarchal uh, beliefs that have operated without our consent so many times. Like we're we're challenging here by actually building a space that's 
that's different and that was built with different intentions. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope it has, I hope we're able to uh, start in the private sector a, a bigger conversation that has a much more of a public impact. Yeah. Motherhood is an activism. You know, motherhood is active and if we choose it to be. Yeah. yeah we have here. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, and I wanted to talk about that too a little bit about the sort of activism that's really baked into the experience here. Can you two sort of describe the ways in which you engage and mobilize your own community here and then maybe, you know, what you're hoping, why is activism sort of part of this vision for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that m mothers have just an inherent stake in our future, right? Like quite literally. <laughs> We're you know, when we talk about even the unpaid labor of taking care of small children, which it is, can be seen, someone can experience as an honor and privilege, someone could experience as very hard work, it's up to them, but we are taking care of the next just economy and future of our world. But I think that, you know, it's no surprise to me to see so many mothers showing up right now in our country. Um, of course we are, we have to. You know, we're staring at tiny children who are mm -hmm. looking back at us who were born in their presidency and Donald Trump. Like, we have to answer for that. Junior and I are both raising boys, too, which I think that that's a good time. Yeah, there was. I until they're right. Right, thank you. Thank you. I have no... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any confidence in that. <laughs> Just the idea of, like, being responsible for these children and how they will set up what we do now, both in their eyes and in our own, is really what the future yeah. looks like. It's really we try to, you know, be really thoughtful about the. We open up our space at night for a lot of activist groups in LA, free of charge, and that's important to us. That, that they're sort of infusing the DNA of service and um, engage in civic engagement. I think in terms of the programming that we do that's activist oriented, we like all of our events to have some sort of component. Um, you know, for the Women's March, we had uh, a sign making party, but we also invited discussion around some of the issues that came up over mm -hmm. the last year. And we opened up that, um, that party to also an active discussion on the feelings. So you could come and make a sign and, and be supported and going, or you could also, um, you know, testify all your feelings about the Women's March this year and the movement. And so that was really important to us that we create a space in which uh, women can have those dialogues with each other. Yeah, and how do, you, how do you think your own feminism sort of have built and shaped the space too? So I think for me, I, you know, have definitely had experienced a, a lot of privilege in my life and, and have been in positions of privilege because of my racial identity and um, the, you know, I grew up comfortably uh, with a certain amount of money. And so it, for me, I didn't, I grew up, you know, in a town where the girls excelled academically, the girls excelled in sports. Like I actually, my dad stayed home with me. So I had a very kind of, my mother worked. My mother was the primary breadwinner. So I had this egalitarian setup. I had a, a system around me that really, um, I felt like the, the girls were the superstars. I didn't, I very, was very lucky in that way. I didn't have body issues. I mean, I thought I looked fucking great. <laughs> I really did. I was like, I eat four bagels a day. Next question, <laughs> folks. Like, keep it moving. Like, I just didn't have that. I'm very grateful for what whatever combination of factors landed me there. I definitely have felt that when I became a mother, I, I was the first time that I personally had come up against what I felt was such a, a ceiling and such a like block from agents telling me, you know, when I would ask them like, well, what's going on with this and what's going on with that? And can we like move on this momentum? And the answer would be like, well, you planning on having another child? And, you know, I was like, wow, I never asked my husband that. Yeah. You know, and even in terms of like the press and interviews I would do, always questions about my kids. Like, Where are you, what are your kids, where are your kids tonight? Like. Are you asking my husband the same question? <laughs> yeah. Just really feeling like, wow, 
we shroud motherhood in um, sweetness and and this saccharine sort of like virginal thing and and it's the greatest honor of my life and yet i think we need to talk about the politics of motherhood mm -hmm. way more than we're doing and so that's really where my feminism has gone is you know talking about motherhood in a political way mm -hmm. My, my experience of it is my feminism has, I feel like I've connected to my feminine divine in a way that has strengthened both as a woman over 40 and who also is in a space that's empowering women to find their success. strongest self and their success. And it doesn't matter what gender it is, but there is, and identifying quality where I see that like the divinity of what all a woman is and all she can be. And I come into the space and before when I was saying I say hello to everyone, there is this acknowledgement and this like gratitude as a woman to a woman that like we're here together and we are at the front lines of making true change. Totally. And um and sort of how, you know, you've done some, you were on TLC's, I was. <laughs> The New Mom Diaries. Oh my God. You were the, the New Mom Diaries. Oh I, read a lot of, I read some of the, I read yeah. some of the uh, older posts on yeah. The New Mom Diaries. And I mean, and I feel like in your work, you've, you've explored so much of modern womanhood and sort of badass feminist characters. And I'm sort of wondering, you know, how how does it all connect for the two of you? And also, what has the impact been for you of the Jane Club? Like, how has it altered your own work life? Yeah, work life being a false dichotomy, but work yeah. life sort of blend. Yeah, whatever. I, I think you know, Jess and I have had. I, I think what's what's beautiful about what's happened here in this space is Jess and I came up with this idea, but we also were able to recruit a team of women to really execute the business, who are executing the business. And when I think about them and what they're doing and how we're growing and how we've been able to retain, like recruit that high level talent to come in and work for the Jane Club with, with no money, really. <laughs> or nothing. It's a dream. Yeah, it's because. Powered by dreams. Yeah, powered by dreams. It's because we've offered them the child care. So mm -hmm. when I really think about how we've been able to create this team around us that's so amazing, um, our two co-CEOs, Dory Howard and Zoe Regan, are incredible, and our their backgrounds are so impressive. And we got them because of what we offer here. So if, you know, when we look at sort of the larger, larger corporations, we look at why women don't run for political office, when we look at like why we're not in the C-suite roles that we should be in, we have to take account, take into account motherhood and how it impacts women's life. So I feel like that's something that Jess and I have done very naturally together. I think in our relationship where we, um, when we work best together, it's it's actually through conflict and not um, avoiding it. We don't agree on everything. We wrestle our way through what we think is right, and but we always show up and we always listen. And our entire team, you know, that that's a that's a part of who we are, which is everybody is a voice at the table, and everybody has a right to say what they think is right. Um, so I feel like that's been really beautiful about how we both come together. We're not the same people. We come to things from a very different point of view. With the same goal in mind, though. It's With really the same interesting. goal in mind. And I think that it speaks to, like, the way we want the space to feel, which is inclusive of, of, you know, many different people. Because we believe at our core that that is the best workplace, that that is the best place to be successful. And if that means successful as a mother, wonderful if that means successful as a an author wonderful whatever that means yeah and i think that there's a real level of authenticity it's about the authenticity of being here um and just being very real about mm -hmm. the messiness the togetherness the celebrations the failures all of it that all is honored yeah and i, I do think you know I, I kind of forgot what your question was but just thinking about kind of how we've come to it that 
you know, being in dialogue, being in sort of um, showing up for whatever is there um, and offering safe opportunities for women to do so in this space is really very important mm -hmm. that we can contain in the Women's March, I, I think with a perfect example of it, that we can contain you know, I mean, the Rebecca Tracer piece was, was beautifully put in that way, that, that we have to be able to contain this, mm -hmm. you know, um, and we can in spaces. And there's, there's, there's really actual power to living in conflict. So we, we don't come at everything the same way, but we also know each other's intentions, always. We show up every time. It's pretty amazing. We've been together now doing this for over a year. And we show up every single time for each other and for the Jane Club. And yeah. that has been an empowering chat, an empowering experience in my life. One of the yeah. greatest lessons. Especially in with me typing that loudly. This has been really, really hard this past year for you. <laughs> It upped my game. How's that? <laughs> I'm a better typer because of it. I'm like, I was once asked to leave a library because of how loudly I was typing. So I, know. I empathize. I sympathize. When you're in a space, you know a lot about people. You yeah, know. you do. Well, and that, right, like, so that is something that's so interesting to see. And I, think, I do think women are communal by nature. Like, we want yes, to be yes, together. Yes, yes, yes. We want yes. to be, you know, together. And, and sharing physical space is, um, it's, an, and co-working space is very, uh, it's very important. Yeah, it is, I think. And I do think, like, we, we welcome men in the space, and we don't have any members yet to our men. I know we will. Um, we've been built to support women, but, but when men do come into the space, Jess always says this, and it's true, they kind of recalibrate. Mm. And there's a sort of like a, a, a softness in the here that most women here are, are quietly honoring the workspace, except for Jess because she screams. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of us are like really kind of feeling into that. And so it, it's, it's really interesting to see. Um, Men knock on the door and sort of like poke <laughs> 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 in. Can I come in? Yeah. <laughs> they all say, are we allowed in? <laughs> of course, please, join us. <laughs> and when they come in, it really is beautiful to see, like going back to sort of that matriarchal oasis that women have had to conform to a patriarchal setup for ourselves. We need to calibrate. Guess what? You can come in yeah. and out, recalibrate to what we are offering. And they do. Every single one of them does. Except for that one man who decided to change to the music to like a country. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who the F turned the country music on? Not that I don't love country music. Seems like an aggressive move at the time. I'm sorry that happened. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was a bit of an assault on the senses. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for taking the time for having me in this space again. Um, I was here for that Shannon Mott event, and it was so fabulous. And, you know, I hope we're, we stay connected. And I'm so excited about all you're doing. And, yeah, we're, open up, so we're opening up another space because we are at capacity here in L.A. In, in the spring. So we'll have to have you back there to see that space. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, please keep growing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Probably not on screen. <laughs>